Davros, deal with AG. Tavros? Hey. Red team is going to bite the dust, and I know you are on the red team. Whoa, really? Yeah, you totally are. My team's got no use for a boy that can't make no use of his legs. You were fated for a team of losers full of blind girls and lame boys and cranky imbeciles. <laughs> okay, you're probably right about that, but I shouldn't be talking to you. Oh? I promised I wouldn't talk to you anymore. What? Promised who? Uh, Rufio? Oh my god, who's that? I hate this guy already. He's, uh... Okay, someone said I should give my self-esteem a name and to be careful about what I say to make sure I don't hurt his feelings. Ha <laughs> So he's imaginary, a fake, like a made-up friend the way fairies are. Made-up, make-believe, fakey-fake fakes. Who told you to do something so fraudulent? Yeah, but I don't know if she was joking about it. It might be a joke, uh, I don't know, but I did it anyway. Oh man, what a meddler. I hate her meddling. Why is she always meddling? I don't know if it was a joke, but man. Uh. I don't think it was a joke. It was more like, okay, complete this analogy. Laughing is to a joke as meddling is to... Uh. Exactly. That's what she just did to you. It is worse than a joke. It is worse than anything you can do. Next time, tell her to can it. That's what I do. But she keeps bugging me. Bugging and fussing and meddling. What's her deal? I guess it's flattering that she wants to talk to me so much, though. I guess I don't mind. It's cool. Anyway, Tavros, you've been amazingly boring as usual, so I'm gonna go. Uh, okay. This show needs to get on the freaking road. Believe it or not, the blue team doesn't have a single player in the session yet, while you guys have like two or three or such. Unbelievable. I wonder what the holdup is. Oh, well, let's face it, you guys need the head start. Uh. Okay, anyway, good luck to you. It'll be just like old times. Adios, Toria Snore. Bye. Tombros, wrap with TC. Motherfuck, my brother. I'm sorry, I, I kind of zoned out there. Hi. That's okay, I, I wasn't expecting you to not be zoned out for any reason, so I guess I don't understand your apology. <laughs> Alright, fuck yeah, it's all good anyway. I just zoned out when I was supposed to be all about being to tell you, you're on my team. Uh, yeah, the red team you mean. Shit motherfucking yeah, my wicked motherfucker! Honk honk honk! Okay, that's great, I, I just heard about this from someone I don't want to talk about. But it still basically qualifies as good news. Honk, 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 honk. Honk. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You stole my fucking nose, bro. What got you even up the gumption to all fucking do the shit like that? I don't know. It's just kind of the obvious thing to do. Stick the circle in front of the dots and behind the bendy one. Plus, oh yeah, my horns. <laughs> Maybe we can slam about it? Yeah, I could kick the shit out of some rhymes, bro. I'll stir up some fucking hell mirth and rip open a fucking bag of harsh whimsy. Yeah, you could talk about the clown things, which I don't really understand ever, but that's okay because it's kind of funny. Whereas I'll address some topics pertaining to my interests and, I guess, personal motifs. Yeah, fuck yeah. That'd be how the shit's all usually up and fucking locked, bro. But, uh, first, here's the the thing with the game. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about the Red Team game. Yeah. Okay, uh, if I remember right, uh, this is how we're juggling this shit. Lots of fucking balls in the air. <laughs> uh, Terezi connected to Carcat, so he's fucking chill. Then I'm supposed to connect to her soon, and to get her all chill too, but... She's in the woods doing something. But when she comes back, she starts playing. So, in the mean motherfucking time, I'm supposed to get you to connect to me. But I fucking spaced out and forgot. <laughs> because I, I guess I was way too motherfucking chill all up in this shit. <laughs> yeah, I understand. So, just download this motherfucker I'm sending to you so we can kick this bitch down the stairs. 
Okay, I'll do that. And in the meantime, shall I queue up the strict beats? Huh? Oh, ho, 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 brother, now you all fucking up and done it. You are fucking wheel deep in a sloppy massacre pie, topped with motherfucking whipped rhyme. How strict are those beats at, motherfucker? Well, I turned up those bitches to pretty stern, set beats to lecture, and I'm kinda going hog wild on the curmudgeon knob, which I had recently installed. God damn! Tell me more while I get my reach on for this frosty brew. Okay, imagine an array of beats that set limits. They got a rule book, it doesn't pay to skip it because there's not a lot of latitude. They won't stand for an attitude, and crossing them's a habit you'd not really want to get into because, uh... They get pretty mad at you. Fuck! So fucking fresh. You need to be slapped fucking silly with a mouth like that. <laughs> and if you got a problem with it, then I suggest you go and wrap it, dude. Okay, I will. Just let me sneak up on this bottle of Fago and snap its neck like I'm a fucking laugh assassin. Okay, all those beats still chill? Yeah. Are they motherfucking strict? Yeah. I. Crack! <laughs> Motherfucking kick it! You both then proceed to have one of the worst wrap offs in the history of Paradox Space. You make your way through the burning woods to meet the Lucis you never had. It's time for her to hatch. It's now or never. Since the world is about to end anyway, you suppose it no longer matters if the Doomsday Scale is tipped. The counterweight is the skull of an ancient mother grub slain thousands of solar sweeps ago. The egg contains a rare species of dragon which remains blind until maturity, using its other senses to survive. It has balanced the skull here for millennia, waiting for the warmth of a meteor-sparked forest fire before hatching. In case it wasn't clear, dragons are real. While she slept in her egg, she would communicate with you in your sleep. After your accident, she would use your dreams to teach you to detect the world around you without vision. As you learned, your dreams became more vivid. Where before there was darkness, odors and flavors painted a striking picture. You found yourself surrounded by bright honey walls, and in the tasty ball of cotton candy, which is this sweet troll delicacy we wouldn't know anything about. The first time you caught a glimpse of this world in your dreams, there was no turning back. The young Lucis would take to the sky and promptly get herself killed. This would be much more shocking and maybe a little bit more sad if we didn't already know what was going to happen. We already knew this. But, of course, you didn't. The dragon never smelled it coming. She would fall to your tree hive. On your return, she would be scooped up by a sympathetic ally and deposited into the Colonel Sprite. Then you and she could talk. There would be plenty to discuss. The Doomsday device would display the amount of time you had to get back to your hive and enter the medium before the forest was destroyed. At the time, it wouldn't occur to you to wonder whether the device was directly responsible for the apocalypse or merely served as its precisely calibrated harbinger. And it certainly wouldn't occur to you to cast doubt on any perceived difference between those two things. It wouldn't until later, when you better understood the game you were about to play. Be the other girl. You are now the other girl. Render the girl in a more symbolic manner. That's better. We can now be properly introduced. Who's this spooky lady? Your name is Aradia Megiddo. You once had a number of interests, which in time you have lost interest in. You seem to recollect once having a fondness for archaeology, though now have trouble recalling this passion. It nonetheless has led you to find your present calling, which came through the discovery of these mystic ruins on which you presently stand, and which you recently desecrated out of boredom. Guiding you to this calling were the voices of the dead, which you have been able to hear since you were young. The voices have become louder as the Great Undoing approaches. This trend and escalation began after an accident involving a certain kind of role-playing, which might have been another of your interests once upon a time. It doesn't matter much anymore. The accident resulted in the death of your Lucis, which prompted you to leave your home and take up these ruins as residents. On the instruction of your ancestors, you have recovered mysterious technology from the ruins, and convinced a friend to adapt it into a game that will bring about the destruction of your civilization. And by convinced, you suppose you mean tricked. He has tentatively named the game Sigrub, which is a word that is not terribly elegant. If it were marked by a legitimate game company instead of rapidly patched together by a young hacker, it would ostensibly be given a better title. He is presently mobilizing 12 friends to play it, including him and yourself. He believes he will lead the blue team, 
but he is wrong. Your troll tag is apocalypse arisen and there is typically a pronounced hollowness to your words. What will you do? Oradia, retrieve computer. It's not up to you to decide what you retrieve from your Siladex. It's up to the spirits. Looks like the spirits are being cooperative today, if a bit cryptic as usual. Who's this douchebag? You found this baffling artifact some time ago on one of your digs. The creature on its facade is completely mystifying. You have taken to using it as your primary computing device on account of its bizarre novelty as well as convenient portability. Oh, look who's bothering you again. She's always bugging you. Bugging and fussing and meddling. What's her deal? You guess it's flattering that she wants to talk to you so much, though. You're okay with it. You're okay with a lot of things. Hi again, Aradia. Oh no. So, I guess tonight is the night you blow everything up. Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? No. Or yes. Yes, there's nothing. And no, you can't. But you shouldn't pretend as if you believe this has anything to do with the state of my mind. Or the decisions it will make or has already made. Yeah, I guess not. I thought I'd be friendly though, and remind you that you do in fact have a hand in all the terrible things that are about to happen, because that's what friends are for, and the fact that what ensues will be terrible is an immutable fact that I am stating for the record, and the fact that we will not be on the same team is similarly immutable. It does not mean that teamwork is what isn't taking place here. Sorry. I didn't follow that. I'll be here to help, if you need me. Okay, thanks. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Waiting for the apocalypse is so boring. You guess you'll check on Solix to see how he's coming along with those teams. You then had a conversation we already read, which began like this. Did you set up the teams? And ended like this. I'm coming up. And then you went up. Hmm, you wonder what she wants. What's with all these girls bugging you? Bugging and fussing and meddling. Aradia! Oh boy, that's way too many of the same letter in a row twice. I know! So, we're about to get started, right? Have you tricked Solix yet? Do you have Mr. Two Eyes all befuddled and flustered in your web of lies? Or, Mr. Four Eyes? Hmm, I don't know. Which nickname do you think would be suitably derogatory in this case, Aradia? How about eight eyes minus seven? <laughs> I didn't trick him. It's not like that. Okay, whatever. The point is, once you've pulled the finely woven silken mesh over his dumb different colored eyes, you and I will start playing the game and be the blue team leaders. That's how this will work, right? Oh wait, do you mind if we're co-leaders? I forgot to ask. I just assumed it was okay with you. I don't care. Great! That's the spirit. And when I bring you into the game, whatever the hell that means, then we can send each other stuff, right? That is how this works, right? Yes. Awesome! Because I have a present for you. It's a surprise and it's going to be great! From me to you. Just from me. From me alone and nobody else. I can't wait to see the look on your face when you see. Okay, well, I'm sure it will be very thoughtful. Hey, speaking of which, what will the name of our team be? Uh, the blue team? No, 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 no. I know that. I mean the name of our team. You and me. Just us. I haven't given it any thought, nor did I think such a thing was up for consideration. But if you want to pretend we both have a separate team together, and name that team, then knock yourself out. I just thought it would be really fitting. Kind of like a fresh start, you know? I don't know, what are our shared interests? I guess I never really thought about this. I guess I'm used to thinking of you as the enemy. There must be some overlap in profiles. Come on, let's brainstorm! Meh, it'll be great. 
We'll be unstoppable. Surely you must admit it'll be nice to rebound from the Team Charge debacle. Never think about that anymore. Oh man, I'm so dumb. Here I am, running my mouth and opening up old wounds while at the very same time trying to make amends. What an idiot. It's okay. Hey, speaking of which, that loser isn't going to be on the blue team, is he? Which loser? Your old team, buddy. No. Oh, thank fucking goodness. Talk about dead weight. You made the right choice, leader. I mean, co-leader. I didn't exclude him for that reason. Or at all. You're just not getting it. You never listen. Man, now I've got this huge beef grub lodged in my nook just thinking about him. I'm gonna go give him a hard time. Let me know when you're live. Later. Don't do that. It's really childish. Uh, wow? Be the mysterious spider girl. You try to be the mysterious spider girl and fail. She's way too mysterious for you to be her yet. Seriously, what's up with those glasses? What's up with that robo arm? What's her deal? She guesses it's flattering that you want to be her, though. She guesses she doesn't mind. It's cool. We'll learn all about her a little later. So, let's get back to Aradia. Aradia. I would like to apologize. I flew off the handle there. It was like the handle was a ball guy going really fast and I was his toupee. So, I'm sorry. It was my fault. It's okay. I hope we're still friends. Yes, we are. So, anyway, I think even though I quit as leader, I'm still gonna play the game now. Because it's either that or get totally creamed by all these fucking space boulders. Hey, maybe we can make the best of the game anyway, even though I guess we're gonna lose. No, I'm sorry. You can't, Solux. Not yet. Oh my god! You're gonna give me shit again? After I crawled on my belly like that, all growling at you? Like some low-class guy with... Whatever color blood is lower on the hierarchy than mine? What's worse than yellow? Fuck this confusing caste system. Anyway, screw you! I'm playing this game right now! No, you're not. Trust me. Wait, what's this? Are you hearing that spooky message from the grave? It's my ability to give a shit, which just died. This is where you laugh again. Come to the window. Why? Because I'm outside. B.S. Take a look. I don't see anything out there. Come closer, you'll see me. I promise. God, I am just bulged deep in the fecal matter of a wildly incontinent hoof beast, but... Okay, I'll indulge you. Here I go. Okay, looking out this lousy stupid goddamn window. Lousy stupid goddamn psychics. Nap time. When you would finally wake up, you'd discover all of your teammates had connected to each other and entered the medium. You would be the last to enter. Your long nap would facilitate a series of important dreams that would prove essential in support of your teammates. But here and now, the destruction of your hive would be imminent unless you could quickly establish a connection to the first player of the group and complete the chain. Solix, wake up. The mind honey. Some of it got in your mouth. You do not, under any circumstance, eat the mine honey. <laughs> Since that moody kid is busy flipping his bifurcated lid, we might as well take a moment to get to know this silly cat girl. Gosh, who is she? Your name is Nepeta Lijon. You live in a cave that is also a hive, but still mostly just a cave. You like to engage in friendly role-playing, but not the dangerous kind. Never the dangerous kind. It's too dangerous. Too many of your good friends have gotten hurt that way. Your daily routine is dangerous enough as it is. You prowl the wilderness for great beasts and stalk them and take them down with nothing but your sharp claws and teeth. You take them back to your cave and eat them and from time to time wear their pelts for fun. You like to paint wall comics using blood and soda and ash, depicting exciting tales from the hunt. And other goopy stories about you and your numerous pals. Your best pal of all is a little bossy and people wonder why you even bother with him. But someone has to keep him pacified. If not you, then who? Everyone has an important job to do. Your troll tag is Arsenic Catnip, and your speech proceeds itself with the face of your Lucis, who is possibly the cutest and perhaps the bestest kitty you have ever seen. What will you do? Nepeta, retrieve claws from arms. You are always wearing your claw gloves. You never know when you might encounter some unsuspecting prey, or when some prey might encounter an unsuspecting you. 
On Altonia, everything is considered unsuspecting prey by everything else. Nepeta, scratch Lucis behind ears. She sure enjoys a good scratch. Ponce de Leon is the best kitty cat. You and she go on adventures together in search of the Fountain of Cute. You ride your Sherpod mount into the rugged frontier, and sometimes she rides you when she gets tired, which is frequently. It sure will be sad when she dies, but who knows when or how that will happen. We might not even really have the time to find out. Later, there is a cave -in. You saunter over to your drawing tablet computer. You use this to draw... On a computer! It would be cool if this could somehow be adapted to serve as a fetch modus as well. That would be so much more fun than the frustrating one you're using now. You wonder what this grumpy fellow wants. Probably something to do with that game. That seems to be all anybody's talking about lately. Hey. AC perks up curiously. She wiggles her rear end a bit and then chases something she sees bounce into one of Carcat's shoes. Carcat? Can't believe he has to sink this low. Carcat can't believe he's asking an autistic girl in a cave to join his team. Carcat mystifies in infinite befuddlement over the fact that you are presently the best remaining candidate for the red team. I am? I mean, AC says, I am, wondrously? Yes, and Carcat can't fucking believe that! Carcat thinks about that a bit, and his jaw drops open and breaks a huge column of bricks like a fucking kung fu master. AC gathers up all the brick pieces and builds a cute little house and invites Carcat inside. Okay, good. It's good that you're talking about building, even if it's in the most inane possible context. You're going to be doing a lot of it. Yes! That sounds fun! Okay, what do I do? Okay, briefing. Me, Terezi, Gamzi, and Tavros are all playing now. The connection order is AT, TC, GC, CG. We need someone to connect to Tereador and get him in the game. I have GA lined up for the red team because she is one of the few remaining sane ones left to play. Okay, the only sane one, but she doesn't want to connect yet because of some mysterious bullshit. So I was like, whatever, what else is new? So I guess that leaves you! Terezi said she had you lined up to play back when she was the fake leader. So I said, fine. So just connect to Tavros and later we'll worry about getting you in. Oh, right. I will talk to him about that. Oh, Ixi pauses and looks up with a bit of chagrin. I forgot I have to talk to someone else about this. I have been procrastinating. Oh, God. Are you really serious? It's not that big of a deal. This boggles my mind. How can you be best friends with the only guy on the planet who's a bigger asshole than me? He's not so bad. He's scum. But do whatever you've got to do, I guess. Tavros is waiting. Nepeta, consult with friend on the matter. <laughs> AC twitches her friendly whiskers at CT. Hi. CT perplexes over where he put that important wrench that he needed for building a fancy robot or something. He says, now where did that silly old wrench go? Look, what are you expecting to accomplish with this? But oh look, CT peeks around the corner to find that a very playful kitty has still on the robot wrench. It's now kicking it vigorously with her hind legs. This is foolishness upon 100,000 prior equally unsolicited foolishnesses. You'll stop now. Rawr, you're so lame! I'm not. I'm fine. No. Lame. No, I'm not. Lame. No. Ugh. You've never played a fun pretend game with me. Ever even once. Even Carcat does it sometimes. Even if he does mean it in a grumpy and insincere way. But at least it's still fun. Yuck. Don't pollute my incoming data stream with his name or any sort of excremental language you pick up from his ilk. I see right through your stupid act. Who are you trying to kid? Look how you go out of your way to use those words that have X's in them, so that you can use your silly percent signs. Or use those absurd words that you can show horn a hundred into, even if it's not strictly replacing blue. You are so transparent. I can tell you like to play games. Deep down, you are a guy who likes to play games. I can smell a guy who likes to play games from so far away with this nose. You have no idea. If you're looking for a loophole through which you may extract concessions from me, you'll have to look elsewhere. See? What the hell? 
Nepeta, what did I say about that awful language? I won't stand for it and you'll stop. Oops. Sorry. Your fraternization with the base classes have loosened your morals, can't you see this? No, I don't care. They're fun. And I don't know anything about classes or bases or blood color. It doesn't matter. What does green blood even mean? It doesn't mean anything to me and it shouldn't mean anything to anyone else. Well, green blood is okay, but it's not great. But that's why you're lucky to have me to look out for you. Because you don't know better, and you can't fight the role the mother had in store for you. Urgh, you are such a hypocrite. You pretend to be so high and mighty, but I know you're not, and I know you like games. Look at that silly little bow and arrow you always type. It's always there, you never forget. Why would you do that if that wasn't a playful fun thing? I am so on to you. My bow and arrow are highly dignified symbols. Well, BS. Archery is among the highest and most exceptional crafts, held in tremendous regard by the most aloof classes for centuries! You suck at archery! No. Yes. No. Yes! No, I don't. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Have you ever even successfully fired an arrow? Like, actually got one to leave the bow? I think we need to stop talking about archery. Nuh-uh. Yes. No! We will stop talking about archery. The topic is making me... Sweat. Ew, you're so gross. No, you're the one who exercises distasteful practices. No, that's you. Everyone knows you're a weirdo and a creep. That's why you're lucky to have me to keep an eye on you. No one else can stand you. You exterminate beautiful, innocent creatures by the hundreds. I can't condone such wretched behavior. Beasts are meant to be looked upon with adoration. But I eat them. I don't kill anything I don't eat. That would be mean. I guess that's basically acceptable in principle, but I still find it a bit unsavory. Oh, I think your habits are unsavory. No, they're not. Yeah, huh? You're wrong about me, Nepeta. I do like to play games, but they must be extremely important games with very high stakes, not the kind played by translucent green wigglers who let loose an excremental surge hard in their wiggler bottom diaper stubs. As it happens, I have arranged to play just such a game tonight. Aradia and I have a private engagement to be co-leaders of the blue team. Oh yeah? Well, just by per chance, it happens that AC has a private and sneaky engagement to play this game as well. And by per sneaky twist of fate, she'll be on the red team with her other great friends who like to play their childish diaper poop games. Nah. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. I forbid this. You will take your position on the blue team with me. Yeah, right. I will take my position into this funny pounce ball and tackle you. That's nonsense. You're nowhere even remotely within my proximity that would be necessary to execute such a maneuver. Issy rolls her eyes almost as hard as she is rolling around this really interesting smell. The thought of you fraternizing with and abetting those stink-blooded hooligans strikes me as a scandal beyond measure. I'm afraid you're too delicate to withstand that sort of corruption. It's forbidden. Nah. Yes, you won't. No, I will! You won't. You can't stop me! I am telling you not to, and you will be on my team. That's final. <laughs> Quiet! Why do you do this? Why are you so confident about your stupid commands? Don't you know you can't actually tell me what to do? It's not like you even have any special mind power to teleport there or anything! No, I do not. And yet, you will do as I say. Yes! Well, we will just see about that. Yes, we will. You will join me on my team shortly. Stand by for further instruction. Yes. You're angry and I appreciate that. But it doesn't matter. Discussion over. Hmm. Nepeta, give Tavros the bad news. Issy curls up in Tavros' lap. Okay. I, for the time being, and for the sake of this fantasy scenario, I pretend that my cat allergies aren't that bad. AC takes a long nap, and then wakes up and frowns because she has bad news. Oh no, is what I say about the bad news, not the nap. Tavros, I'm sorry, I can't be on your team. I'm not allowed. Oh, that's okay. Then I guess you said no then? Yes, unfortunately. <sighs> I'm so mad! It's probably for the best that you listen to him. I don't know. You think so? Well, if you didn't listen to him before, you might have played games with us before. And something bad might have happened to you. Hmm. Perhaps. But still, I 
you feel bad. I'll find another player. It's not a big deal. Good luck being on the blue team. Okay, thanks. You fondly recall your days of far more intensive role-playing. It seems like so long ago now. Aside from a few unfortunate moments, it was a lot of fun. If you had to do it all over again, you suppose you would select better company. Maybe this game you are playing tonight will rekindle some of that excitement. Tinkerball?